crabs. <laughs> Welcome everyone to the April 19th meeting of the Northampton City Council. My name is Jean Louise Shara. I am the City Council Vice President and I will be presiding this evening. For those curious as to why I'm presiding, um, at our last meeting two weeks ago on April 5th, we invoked section 3-7 of the charter, <coughs> which is for the temporary absence of the mayor. The mayor is abroad from April 14th to the 22nd. <coughs> so the City Council President is the acting mayor. And as uh, also section B of, um, Sec part B of section 3-7 uh, says that a councilor um, as acting mayor shall not vote as a member of the city council. So because of that, councilor president, council president O'Donnell decided not to preside over this meeting and you have me because section 2-2 of the charter says the vice president shall <laughs> preside in the absence of the president. So I'm happy to be here and to fulfill that duty. I'm gonna announce that we are being audio and video recorded and as always, we're gonna start with public comment. Um, this is an opportunity for the public to speak on any topic. It doesn't need to be a topic that is on the agenda tonight. Um, I have the sign up sheet, I'll start with that and then I'll ask if there's anybody else who would like to speak after we make it through these names. Um, please state your name and address for the record and please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Um, as a reminder, we do not respond during public comment. So the first name that I have here is Blair Gimma. Um, hi, I'm Blair Gemma. So soft nuts, I, I give up on my life correcting it. But um, and I live at Three Clark Avenue. And um, just shortly, I wanted to give a short comment um, to the council about the survey that was released by the mayor um, this week uh, that was called Opinions on Downtown. Um, because you know, likely this work group um, that doesn't record when they meet publicly and doesn't hold their meetings um, open to the public. Uh, we'll come up with some findings and one of your, one of the council members will try to pass some legislation based on these findings and I just wanted to comment about the survey that was released and um, you know taking the survey was like getting on like a horror themed roller coaster ride. Uh, that I didn't want to get on, in which <laughs> I basically like 25 times had to say that I don't, uh, <laughs> I, I don't hate panhandlers. And um, I thought that, you know, I think it's a pattern for our mayor in 2013, he removed benches only earlier this year, he advocated for cameras that would monitor uh, the lives of houseless people 24 seven. And now there's a survey um, that I don't quite understand how it could possibly be used uh, to create policy. Um, and you know, I read in our paper about um, one of the business owners who was a part of a work group. Um, we don't know everyone who's a part of a work group um, because that is also a secret. Um, and they said that the question about whether panhandling should be criminalized, they said, well, see, that's, that's illegal. And we just wanted to see if people know that criminalizing panhandling is illegal. So apparently it was a trick question just to see if we know that panhandling is illegal. That's a very odd uh, question and strategy for the executive of our town to release a survey like that. And so I just like want that on the public record um, and to posit criminalizing poverty, but for an executive to do that, it normalizes it. So I just encourage you to encourage the mayor to disband the panhandling work group <coughs> and um, your colleague, Dennis Bidwell, who is, has admitted he's a part of it, um, to encourage him to disband it as well. at this time. Um, next up is Mike and Griffin. Thank you. 
Mike Weifenberg, 252 Lower Road, uh, Deerfield. Um, I'm the publisher of the Daily Hampshire Gazette. And uh, just wanted to comment on the, the public notice, if I may. Uh, newspapers combine reach with accountability. Uh, newspaper publication of public notices serves as an essential role in, in ensuring the integrity of public notices and protecting against government secrecy, favoritism, and corruption. Historically, the integrity of public notice publishing has required four elements. Uh, they must be published by a neutral and independent party. Allowing government officials to post public notices takes away third-party neutral oversight and removes all independent proof of publication. Second, uh, they must be accessible to the public. The government has a fundamental duty to ensure adequate public notice. The duty cannot be abandoned in favor of presumed cost savings or convenience. Newspapers are the most effective medium for that purpose. They must be capable of uh, being archived in a secure and accessible format to preserve the record of publication and to, to substantiate the fact of publication in legal proceedings. And fourth, uh, their publication must be capable of being verified and authenticated by the publisher. Newspapers serve an important monitoring function. In government, if government becomes a, 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 the exclusive publisher of its own notices, it would be much more uh, difficult for the community to monitor uh, com compliance and accuracy. To allow the government to become the exclusive publisher of its own notices would decimate the purpose of providing such notices. All four elements, independence, accessibility, preservation, and authentication would be undermined. So tonight, you are scheduled to vote on uh, ordinance to eliminate newspaper legal notice requirements for site plan review uh, projects and an ordinance to eliminate newspaper legal notice requirement for projects that need central business arch architecture review. And I encourage you to vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Dane Cutler. Cutler, 47 Orchard Street, Ward 3. Good evening. Happy birthday, Bill. It's good to see you all. Um, I received a call this afternoon at work. It was Jim Nash asking me how much legal notices cost. I know this because I am the legal's desk at the Daily Hampshire Gazette. I am not, however, speaking on behalf of the Gazette or its publisher, Mike Reifenberg. I am here entirely as a citizen and also someone whose livelihood kind of depends on legal notices, so balance that how you will. The truth of the matter <laughs> is that this fight is being fought in multiple places across the country. I know because I have a Google alert for legal notices and municipalities, because that's how I am. Um, most places where this fight is happening, the wins, so to speak, are going to the newspapers. It is being decided overall that um, it is n most appropriate for a neutral third party like a local paper to be the place for um, legal notices to be posted. But I keep an eye on them because um, I think they are one of the markers of the way our world is changing. And sometimes it's a question of, are we simply acknowledging the way the world is changing and that more and more people are accessing things digitally? Um, and it is considered just as accessible to be able to see the internet as it is to be able to see a paper. Are we just naming what's already happening or are we driving it? I think in this case, it looks like one, but in fact is actually the driver. The newspaper is still the community bulletin board, so to speak, it is still, the place where things are fought out, argued, where democracy in our towns happen, I think. And um, I think the last thing I want to say is that ultimately, if you do decide to change the legal notice policy about site planning, frankly, those are small notices for the most part. And um, I imagine it would save the city some money. And, you know, I'm all about efficiency in municipal government. Um, and what that essentially does is it'll, it forces people, re regular ordinary people, to make up the shortfall 
in what we expect in legal's revenue. People who are changing their names, going through adoptions, <coughs> people who are losing their homes will end up picking up the tab if the city doesn't essentially pay what we budget as its share. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next is Tucker, and I can't read your last name, sorry. Quinlan. Um, I wanted to speak with you about a movement to change the voting age of Northampton to 16 years old. Um, I fully support this, and uh, that's because it's just fundamentally good for democracy to enfranchise more citizens. And uh, uh, civic engagement has been dropping in Northampton, and I think that if we enfranchise 16 and 17 year olds as well, your voter turnout will increase which will be good for democracy in turn. And um, there is no real difference, studies have shown, between 18-year-olds and 16-year-olds for their ability to choose in an election. So 18 is basically just an arbitrary number chosen. It was selected in 1971, but it was changed from 21 to 18. So why can't we just make it 16? I think 16 and 17-year-olds deserve the right to vote in Northampton. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, Tucker was the last person that was on the sign-up sheet. Is there anyone else who would like to provide? Please, Eric. Uh, First, and then yeah. Eric. Harkins. Oh. Oh, yes, Eric Harkins. Uh, two things only. Um, Amy at Starbucks mentioned uh, parking meters. I believe they went up fifty percent, but they do supply the DPW with funds and filling potholes. So that seems to be maybe a mute point. Some can or cannot afford parking meters. Uh, there's a Syrian uh, response or a homegrown U.S. response to Syria trying to stop our missiles. And uh, still hopes to them, thoughts to them, they get a website out because you can't stop a missile without a website. It's UMass group and there was a uh, protest in town the other day um, against our mi missiles in Syria. And uh, so our thoughts to UMass uh, coalition.org to get their web website up, because the Pentagon has a few computers here to Bahrain in the Gulf and a sea of Saudi, and you need a website to stop a missile. So our thoughts go with uh, the coalition.org from UMass. Homegrown response to Syria. And uh, it's true, some money for missiles could be put to other things. Public housing. We'll leave it at that. Happy birthday again, Bill. Nice to <laughs> Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. It's going to shoot me. Thank you, sir. <laughs> My name is Michael Vito. I reside at 91 Grove Street. Happy birthday, by the way. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. Sorry, I hear you. Um, one of my major things is um, I'm always around, walking around the city. I'm always meeting new people. And I use the bike path a lot. Um, I use the bike path as a way to um, just to be, be by myself. And I noticed with the bike path and around Northampton that there is a lot of trash. Um, I don't know um, when it comes to the TPW or, um, but um, I think maybe we should, you know, as a city, we should um, have like a, I don't know, like a volunteer group that could volunteer to pick up the trash around the city. Um, I think that would make, uh, I know uh, uh, 20 years ago, the honor court program, when they were here, that's, that was their biggest thing, and it was a really beautiful city. And um, just something to keep in mind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is anyone else? Please. Hi, I'm Margo Shockey Green. I live at 85 Burnsby. Um, happy birthday, Bill. If I had <laughs> oh, and I would have, you know, you, Thank you. brought you another cake. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about the resolution that you guys are going to be reviewing shortly um, to lower the voting age. And um, I wanted to talk about a bit about why it's important <coughs> to me, um, other than what Tucker Quinlan has previously said. Um, I think that the youth of Northampton especially has 
demonstrated a really, really strong commitment to civic engagement and has demonstrated their commitment to bettering our country and our government in the way that the government makes policies for everyone. Um, and I think it's very important to be represented when we are you know, engaging in these things such as the March for Our Lives, bringing thousands of people together for, to rally for um, gun control laws. And um, I think that the youth has a lot to say and we would love to be represented in a way that um, is productive for our community and on a larger scale, our democracy. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, <coughs> Will Meyer, Hadley, happy birthday, Bill. <laughs> Let's uh, lower the voting age in the panhandling survey is not very, it's not good. <laughs> Thank you, Will. <laughs> Anybody else? Nope? Okay. So if there's no other public comment, <coughs> then we'll convene, and I ask that the roll Ready, Lord. Present. Here. Present. Here. 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 Okay, so we have convened and um, we have a quorum. So our first item, um, we do not have any public hearings and uh, the council president's not here. Um, for an update, are there any committee chairs that have any updates? I do, rel actually, relative to the resolution that was being discussed about the lowering of the voting age that will be introduced at the, uh, the next legislative matters meeting that we have, and hopefully we're for a referral back to this, this body for a vote. Excellent. Just to let folks know. Um, so we're up to recognitions and one minute announcements by counselors. If people don't mind, I was gonna start. I was deeply worried no one was gonna acknowledge Councilor Dwight's birthday. Um, <laughs> clearly I needn't have been concerned by it. I have just one further indignity for him. Hoping <laughs> <laughs> that, that will stick to his placard maybe, if you could pass that down. So we wish you a very, very, very happy birthday. But just a tiny little bit of payback from the yeah, fair enough. No, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> okay. You commented on it. Right. So. <laughs> Thanks. No, uh, rest assured, dig indignity is well established. Thank you. Excellent. Not the new city Not seal. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, what did I stick it on? <laughs> it's on the seal. It's on the seal? Yeah. Better. Perfect. Right. Oh, yes. Counselor. And I would also like to acknowledge. Okay. Councillor Bill Joy on a happy birthday from all of us. And maybe you could hold that picture up. <laughs> could you hold it up so we can get it on the video? Honestly, this is <laughs> I'm starting to feel picked on. Look, it was found on the internet. That's a picture of me in diapers. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> and I'm still wearing these right now. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor. <laughs> Are there any other <laughs> recognitions or one minute announcements? No? Okay, so um, we do, the mayor as we've heard is not here, so I don't believe we have communications or proclamations from him unless he's going to like Princess Leia hologram in from Greece, which I don't see happening. So we're gonna move on to the consent agenda and I'm going to read through the items. Um, so first item is approval of the March 15th, 2018 minutes. Move to approve. Um, I'm, so I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna read through the entire oh, consent okay. agenda. And, Sorry about that. Um, next item is 18.087, application for taxi cab licenses, five licenses for Jeffrey Miller from Cosmic Cab. Uh, two 2003 Chrysler PT Cruisers, a red and brown one, a 2000 Chevy Suburban SUV in brown, and two 2008 Dodge Caravan, Caravans, one in brown, one in black. Then 18.088 uh, petitions for annual secondhand dealer licenses. These are renewal licenses for Cancer Connection at 375 South Street. Nancy uh, Charbonneau is the petitioner. The Family Jewels, 56 Green Street. Richard J. Stone is the petitioner. 
Jack's uh, Spire Spear Antiques, 416 North Main Street in Leeds. He's also the petitioner. Kid Stuff, 90 Maple Street. Tammy Shirk is the petitioner. Norman E. Maynard, 25 Garfield Avenue, the petitioner. Roz's Place, 6 Bridge Street. Timothy Saldo is the petitioner. Ryan Zuller is at 14 Strong Avenue. John Malinkowski is the petitioner. Stuart F. Solomon Antiques at 9 and 3 quarters Market Street. He's also the petitioner. Urban Exchange at 233 Main Street. Sylvia Naumberger is the petitioner. And then item D is 18.089, petition to operate a pool hall. Um, these are this is a renewal license for Packards at 14 Masonic Street for a weekday license and for a Sunday license. Robert McGovern is the petitioner. 18.090, petitions to operate a bowling alley. And this is for Northampton Bowl at 525 Pleasant Street for a weekday license and a Sunday license. J. Michael Corley is the petitioner. And 18.091, petition for annual junk dealer license. And this is a renewal license for Norman E. Maynard at 25 Garfield Avenue, who is the petitioner. And then the last item is 18.092, an application for supervised display of fireworks. Northampton Family Fourth Committee is the applicant and Pyrotechnico Fireworks Inc. is the operator. I'd like to call, I'd like to remove item 18.087 from the consent agenda. Taxi cap. Yes, thank you. And any other removals from? I'll move the consent approval of consent agenda. Second. That, taking out. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so now we're going to, we've pulled out 18.087, which is application for taxi cab licenses for Jeffrey Miller. Um, so thank you for pulling that out. There's been some uh, discussion and confusion about this application. Um, and it, uh, the confusion is as to where um, the operation, where where Mr. Miller is operating out of. Actually, I'm pausing for a moment because he's just locked in. So, um, Mr. Miller, just a heads up, we just are discussing your taxi cab licenses. Oh, okay. We, it ju we just started. You have perfect timing. Um, so, the, um, there's been discussion between the city council office and the solicitor, the city clerk, Carolyn Missions Planning, <coughs> and Louis Hasbrook, uh, the building commissioner, about the application um, because there are the on the application the the address listed is for um, 160 Main Street, number eight. The website um, for the company says 78 Con Street, which might be the previous address. But then also we've received a complaint that perhaps there's an operation um, happening out of um, a house on Hooker Avenue. And that hasn't been determined whether or not it is being operated out of there. But um, that, uh, that place is not zoned for commercial business. So while the building at that location on Hooker Avenue has had a non-conforming commercial use status granted to it in the past, one has not been granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals for Cosmic Cab to use it um, for taxi use. So Mr. Miller has received communication from the city clerk about this and has been told to contact the building commissioner about it. Um, so, and then Mr. Miller has been invited to come and answer some questions, if, if you would. Um, I'd say the main question that I have and, and other counselors can weigh in is, um, where is the business operated? Is it at all or some of the locations? Um, and do all the locations comply? Move we'll to recognize uh, Second. Jeff Miller. Uh, okay, all those in favor of recognizing Mr. Miller? Aye. 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 Um, step up. So, Mr. Miller, please. Um, so, I don't know if you caught sort of the, the main question yes, that I I've, think we have. I've spoken with uh, the building commissioner, Mr. Um, Hasbrook. Well, Hasbrook, Lou Hasbrook. And yeah, it seems as though that spot at Hooker, which was not originally ever used for an office, but since there was a complaint, we have been using it to park vehicles. Um, given its na the nature of the building and, and the, you know its history, no one thought that there would be a problem 
because it had always been used for it was a milk distribution it started in uh, you know maybe 1930 and then it moved to uh, it was a mechanical contractors plumbers heaters uh, painters have have all worked in there um, so in the I left the 78 con Street so I had to find an office in town um, and I you know I've been on Main Street which wasn't ever in question I believe I just had a, a cab that got a license with that address so I didn't you know think that that was a question that city clerk knew I mean um, about our move I told her as soon as we had you know changed just to follow with the regulation of having a, a, a physical address in the office in town um, so now this spot has been used primarily to just to park some vehicles um, as well as my own personal use for some of my you know my vehicle that I do a little work in the garage on you know but um, I don't have an office there per se it's just been nest for for parking the vehicles which we haven't parked on the street I know I got an email from Lou that's you know showed some pictures and said that's a typical day at Cosmic Cab on Hooker Ave which wasn't the case I mean sometimes yes somebody parks on the street you know while one of the vehicles is being moved or something we might have to leave it there for you know a short a short time but nothing is ever left overnight now they've just recently also changed that parking on Hooker Ave to uh, uh, 11 to 5 a.m. so there's no overnight parking anyway so we wouldn't be parking the vehicles there for fear of being towed okay so um, so the the five licenses that you've applied for mm -hmm. so those five vehicles are kept so they're not kept at the Main Street address well no because there's no parking originally right. we were just using the town parking lots going along with you know the other or our predecessors we'll call them with green cab who used the town lots and um, they had an office where was that the maplewood shops mm -hmm. and so it was ne never been a question of using the town lots and that's what i was doing this summer well i had didn't have the you know because i had to leave the con street address which was where we primarily <coughs> had everything <coughs> uh, it wasn't a problem it was never a question so just tried to comply and have that address and there was I didn't think there was a question of using the town lots I'd even inquired about getting you know um, the monthly passes but found it was a little more cost-effective if we didn't because the cabs are always moving so they're <coughs> not, it's not like they're parked there all day usually they're in operation and you know they could be anywhere in town so even at the hooker Ave address they might be parked there overnight but they're not necessarily there all day and they don't not coming and going someone comes gets a cab and they go and do the taxi work a uh, couple questions you, you you have a tenancy agreement with the property on Hooker Avenue I do. Um, it seems to me the some of the bigger questions are there's no truly identifiable place for Cosmic Cab is a central location and office space and uh, point of what you're dealing from, but it looks like it's Hooker Avenue is the way it's shaping up. Is that? Well, I mean, all my office work and everything's done out of Main Street. You know, right, but I mean, where the, the but Street. the vehicles dispatch out of out of Hooker. I mean, the well, they don't dispatch out of there because they don't go back there to sit and wait for a call. The warehouse there. <laughs> what would, how would you I, what would how what would you describe the status of the, the old thing? building? Well, no, the, I know the building. But I'm saying what you're doing at Hooker Ave, how would you describe that? Cleaning vehicles, washing them. Vehicle know. maintenance. Yeah, vehicle maintenance kind of stuff. Vehicle maintenance. Uh, and then, and then, but now, and you said you spoke with Louis Hasbrook about um, uh, the zoning compliance because of. Yes. And yeah, I was in there was today. I was given the forms to fill out to apply for non conforming the, the use. Zoning Board of Appeals. Then. Um, so that's going to go into effect. I mean, I guess that takes it takes, takes a little, a little, little while to get going, yeah. but yeah. so um, it, I, I I don't want I don't I personally don't want to uh, limit the ability of Cosmic Cab to function because they provide a valuable function, but at the same time I don't want um, 
I'm concerned about gray area issues that might give all of us in trouble at some point. I mean, I'd, I would recommend uh, a contingency permit, if you, if you will, something that would be temporary until the status is cleared and for a full-time license, uh, subject to review by the, this, this body. I mean, it, that would I be I just have a question. I mean, it, <clears throat> Before you do, I'll also right. <clears throat> just note as the ward counselor for Hooker Avenue that I've heard a number of complaints mm -hmm. from I have a handful. I mean, it's a very small street, and there's only a handful of people there, but they've all contacted me and um, been very concerned about the regular presence of cosmic cabs. Uh, well, like, we are so. parked over there. I mean, like I said, we do maintenance, and I, I mean, vacuuming. I was there vacuuming and, and washing today. Right, and their concern is that they understand that it's a... Uh, um, <clears throat> It's that the zoning doesn't allow for <clears throat> that vehicle maintenance or any storage to be happening on that residential street. Okay, but it's been used as that for... As a non-conforming use in the past with that was right. permanent, but your, but your business is not... Right, so I would have to apply for... I mean, I'm not... I'm not this no, I understand, but while it doesn't exist... Me, I'm, I'm honestly just doing my best to provide the service and... Mm -hmm. You know, dealing with what's what's available in in the you know in the area, I, you know, um, it's as far as the cost effective nature of this business. I have to be able to do those things. So whether I'm doing them at the Jiffy Loop parking lot, you know, vacuuming and, and cleaning, or doing them, you know, on Hooker Ave. Your neighbors on Hooker Ave are complaining that it's a non-conforming use. I that know, but I mean, a specific complaint would have to be addressed then by the, the zoning board, correct? Yeah. And, and yeah. I mean, we, we don't... Well, no, by the building inspector who says that it's not, you don't have the permission now for non-conforming use. Right. And so in presently, you don't have permission to use that street as a non-conforming use. Okay. That's the present status. I understand, but I'm in my, you know, to my knowledge, I'm not trying to, you know, be deceitful by any means to you or, or, or. Well, no, I'm just, I'm just pointing know. out the fact that you have no permission now. I understand. To to, can you see from my perspective that I was offered that spot and told by the business owner that the, or the, the property owner that this was a commercial property and I was available to to use for exactly what and I understand using. that you were told that by the property owner but the fact is that it's not allowed as a okay. non-conforming use presently okay. so you've you've applied or you will <coughs> be applying with the zoning board yes. for a non-conforming use yes. um, and do you have a contingency plan in case it's not granted well we have the office on Main Street where I was you know like I said I was just granted a, a license based on that address um, and that was last month I believe or two months ago it was a single vehicle that came up so wait so that was for a single vehicle but now you have five vehicles no because that was just one that I added on this is because every year I have to annually renew all the licenses this that was one that I had added on you know during within that year or so you know, I still have to get it approved before. Okay. So to Councillor Dwight's point, um, having conferred with the solicitor, it would be, we would be able to and it would be appropriate for us to, to grant a temporary license for Mr. Miller to, um, you know, sort out with the city departments and the, and the boards that he needs to, you know, whatever issues he has. So we, we could do that. that could way. I question that? Yeah. I mean, if we <laughs> yes. do that as a temporary license, could the contingency be not to park? On, on that residential street? Well, we don't park on the street. I mean, not to park on Hooker Avenue. Yeah, I mean, I could not park li my license cabs on, you Hooker know, Avenue. I have some that are not on the road. Is that going to be also? No, no cosmic cab should be parked on Hooker Avenue, is my understand. understanding, given that you have no permission for a non conforming use there. And so well, I mean, the only the contingency would be <coughs> that in the meantime, while this is waiting to be sorted out, that those cabs not be <coughs> not be parked on on Hooker Avenue. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, Councillor Labarge, did you have something? Yeah, I'm, uh, 
I'm a little confused with this. You do have an office somewhere here? <coughs> 160 Main Street. Okay. And on Hooker Avenue, which I have had heard from people about the amount of the cabs, you do maintenance there, correct? Light maintenance, vacuuming, you know, washing vehicles. And at some point, it was a business before? Yeah, it was AR Mechanical uh, Contractors. And is it grandfathered? No? Okay. <coughs> according to the, to the owner of the property, it is. Not according, according to, to the, the solicitor. To and the not according to the building code. Okay. That was my concern if it was grandfathered or not. No. But anyways, with your business here now that you have, where are you going to park? to go back to parking in the in the in the city lots like so uh, another question are you did you say that you have some some non-functioning vehicles stored there I'm not sure but we should check into that too mm -hmm. Jeff and Ed, because I'm not sure um, there are certain conditions relative to uh, it's not an abandoned vehicle because clearly you're not abandoning it, but the fact is that, that it, it, it is, are they in the lot or in the building? There's a back area that's, you yeah. know. So there's some, there are actually regulations of, relevant to that too, and, and when, it, when we run into the pre-existing non-conforming use, blah, 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 blah. So it's a bit of, it seems like it's a bit of a swamp, and mm -hmm. I think we can hack through the brush and probably- You're talking about the back of the building, or? No, no, I'm talking about the issue, where right now- well, the back of the, the I'm using a bad swamp, metaphor. So. It's funny. So, um, um, but I think I think it's the intent of this council to see that you are able to continue to do business because, as you said, you provide a critical um, service to the community and uh, particularly an underserved community. Um, but at the same time, it, it seems that we have to clear this up. the The parking issue is also a that's a different mystery. It has nothing to do with you. We have to figure that one out. That's just that it looks like an antique ordinance of some sort, but it wouldn't really pertain to your status and your, your ability to work out of there. So, yeah, I mean, my inclination is to actually move for a temporary license subject to um, the Zoning Board of Appeals decision, and then we revisit it once that decision's been rendered and then make a decision from there. Um, could I ask that as condition of that... Um, contingency or temporary permit um, that the vehicles not be parked on Hooker Avenue. A concern about that is it's that specific to one agency that, I mean, um, they're regi the legally registered vehicles if they're paying their excess tax and they're for public vehicles. I, I understand the problem and the pressures on Hooker Avenue. It's a one block street and, and I think if we do that, then we run into a problem with other agencies. But at the same time, I think we can, if need be, we can embed in the language of permitting for all services possibly. And I think that would be, um, I, w I would not like to make our approval of his license under the current rules and conditions that we have to add an additional condition that no other, no other taxi cab company experiences. Yes. So that what I would suggest is that it w <laughs> We've been massaging taxi licensing for quite a while now. We're going to revisit it again. And then maybe at some point that could be an amended uh, addition, uh, but based on debate and discussion. So. Right. I just, uh, the reason I'm asking that is we do have, you know, half a dozen residents on Hooker Ave who are wanting to have those vehicles not parked on that street because in their understanding, that street is a non-conforming use for the parking of taxi vehicles and have asked us to actually deny the license based on that. I'm not looking to deny the license. No. I would do a temporary, but I would ask that in the meantime that the vehicles not be parked on that street. Uh, to, it was to that direct point. to okay. me, so and I would like to respond and then. Sure, uh, and then Council Murphy. Um, I, think, I think I understand the resident. We have a number of residents mm -hmm. who don't want a lot of people parking on their streets for a variety of reasons. Of Council Murphy has endured Middle Street discussion for Oh, about a quarter of a century, and I think that, um, and we have to understand that, that that neighborhoods don't like cars parked particularly for long periods of time that would deny them and deprive them of parking spaces, but at the same time, these are public streets. 
and Hooker Hooker is no different in that respect. And so if we, and I think, if we make an exception, we better do it by law and do it properly as opposed to doing an attachment in the condition to the permit. That's my only concern. With the chair, just as I understand it, mm -hmm. presently, according to the solicitor's um, email, and the um, cabs are not allowed to be parked on that exactly. street. That's the present condition. And he and they would only be allowed there should ca Cosmic Cab apply for a non-conforming use and, and receive that permission for a non-conforming use. I'm, I'm looking at a different letter, I don't know. Taxis are actually non-commercial vehicles. Howard Seawald. Um, and they are all licensed in, uh, my, in my name, personally. No, no, you're right, it doesn't actually say that, but that was my understanding. Okay. Um, you're done. So a motion was started, but other people want to speak. Right. So basically my motion and prepare for a second is to grant temporary permit uh, conditional um, uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals um, process and their decision and then subject to a renewal um, and more community input as well too. I would just, uh, I would recommend that we say 60 day. Um, so you want to put a deadline on it? All right, I'm amenable to that. I don't, I mean, if, if the ZBA can actually do with it, what they got to do within the 60 days, yes. If not, then that's an unfair <coughs> condition, but I would say it was 60 days, sure. Okay. Except in that specific case, continued discussion. Yes, okay, then. Oh, great. If, since okay. it's. So, can, may I just go to Councilor Murphy, who's been waiting? Please. And this would apply to the, to the motion that was seconded. Um, it's, it seems to me it's like two different issues. One is renewing a license for a cab company. The other is what's going on Hooker Avenue. If the cabs are on Hooker Avenue in violation of zoning, the building commissioner should order them off of Hooker Avenue. Mm -hmm. And if Mr. Miller takes them off, I mean, there's no reason he shouldn't have his license. If, you know, we shouldn't be doing zoning enforcement, the building commissioner should. If they're not supposed to be there and he needs a special permit or something with the zoning board, mm -hmm. the building commissioner orders the cabs off Hooker Avenue. He gets his license. He settles, makes his peace with the, with the Zoning Board of Appeals and either brings them back there or doesn't, depending on what they have to say. But it would seem the license is one question and Hooker Avenue is a separate question. Building Commissioner orders the cabs out of there till he gets a permit, if he gets a permit, totally different from us letting him continue to run his cabs. Um, <coughs> so I, I, the zoning is different from his license. He could tomorrow put all the cabs back in a public lot, run out of Main Street, and you still have uh, an operation of Main Street, right? You yes. still have tenant there. So. Yeah. That's your uh, business address. We give you your licenses. You put your cabs wherever till Hillcore Avenue works itself out. But it's two different things. It, just for clarification, I, I need to say that when I'm saying Hooker, Hooker, Hooker Avenue, I'm not talking about the address at Hooker Avenue where, where he is. I'm talking about parking on the street of Hooker Avenue. Um, by my understanding, they can park on any street they want. Right. But the property is... The, the property one, is the different. one that yeah. is it zoned or not for and maybe I, and I might have missed that distinction in Councilor Carney. Yes. May I point out from the solicitor? <clears throat> the solicitor said so the council is within its rights to know first uh, the solicitor tells us that the address is the website has the con street and the application uh, what well, we know we're operating out of Main Street. So the council is within its rights to know where they are to be stored and to impose that arrangement, if acceptable to the council and consistent with zoning, as a condition of the permit. So I, I, even though they are separate issues, what we're advised from the solicitor is that we're within our rights to say that the storing of the vehicles, um, where they're stored, could be a, a knowledge of that, would be a condition of the permit. Um, my sense is I'm happy to grant the license, not you know, as a not even temporarily, if I would understand that they were not being stored, which is you know the mm -hmm. the verb used by the solicitor, that they're not being stored at a location that is different from um, the main street links main street location. Would it be acceptable to grant the permit subject to his vehicles being stored in a legally permissible location? Because clearly 160 Main Street has no capacity to store them. You know, if the building commissioner says it's not legal to store them at Hooker Avenue, 
he could put them in a city lot. He could you know, right. put anywhere legal. Yes, but we grant, grant it such that he parks his vehicles in legally permissible locations, wherever that may be. May in I Stampton, ask, if he wants. You may know. I ask <laughs> that? Um, yeah. Where did you store your vehicles before you moved to uh, Hooker Avenue? Look, it's at different places. I mean, some of the drivers take them home. They they park them at their house or how long have city you been vehicles. having them come to Hooker Avenue? Oh, it was since August, yeah. I believe. So it's since then that the residents on Hooker Avenue have alerted us and pointed out the fact that it is a non-permissible use for you to store the vehicles on Hooker Avenue well, presently. I, I mean, if I was aware of that, I definitely would have taken the steps to either, you know. Would make, you do that now? Good. That's, I've already started. I mean, I've, I would have dropped off the application today, but they don't take them till you know, they do them on Thursdays and I missed the deadline. So My question is, would you move the vehicles? Would I move the vehicles now? I mean, off of Hooker. Yeah. Sure. I, you know, if I could have some a little time, I, I you know, to get like to if put you're back talking about, I have I have two vehicles. I have my vehicle there. I have two vehicles that are cabs, but they're not currently on the road. One is for parts, and one is awaiting uh, money for repairs. <laughs> so I mean, it's it's uh, disabled. But it is in the process of being, you know, brought back on the road. So I mean, it's a, and then there's another that is a parts vehicle that I need the engine out of because, you know, four hundred thousand miles on a caravan and it's going to need <coughs> an engine, you know. So I mean, there are certain things that benefits to to that. Do you have address. a driveway? Do you have a driveway there where you're residing there on Hooker Avenue? Well, I don't reside there. Oh, it's not. So you're just a, renting. It's not a house. Right, you're renting the lot. The lot, yeah. I mean, I mean so there's a, a lot. It's an industrial it. building. It's it's a you know, um, giant garage bay door. Oh, there's okay. another garage bay in the back. There's you know. Um, um, but were there any questions up here? I thought I saw a hand. That went. I thought maybe Councilor Nash, may I, or it's just up to that point. Um, and and then this then is the Councilor Murphy's point. The building inspector has the authority to determine, make a determination of whether they're in violation or not. And if they're in violation, he has to make corrective action. It's not, and um, and I think part of the ambiguity is when we say Hooker Avenue, we're either talking about the address that he's a tenant, or we're talking about the avenue itself on the side of the street. And I think we need some clarity there. But as far as the uh, his tenancy and how he conducts his tenancy, I think the building commissioner has um, has the means to address that, and and we would have to defer to him, I think, and ultimately. Thank you. <coughs> Councilor Nash. Yeah. So it sounds to me like um, so the the property property on Hooker Avenue can no longer be used for storing vehicles or business. for this business. <coughs> so they're going to have to go somewhere, and we need to know to approve this license where exactly that is going to be as to Councillor Murphy's point. And I'm, I'm not clear as to where that's going to be. So, DBA. OK, Councillor Labarge. Thank you. Um, the building inspector. I think, Councillor Carney, you mentioned about how several residents complained about the parking on Hooker Avenue of the company, correct? Yes, yeah, I had a number of complaints. Okay. Did they actually complain to the building inspector? They spoke to the planning department, to Carolyn Mish, and she indicated that um, a report at that point had not been reviewed, or the situation had not yet been reviewed by the building commissioner. And so as I understand it now, Mr. Miller has just suggested that he spoke with the building, building commissioner himself because of the number of complaints and the issue being brought to a head. And he's, um, he's going through the process of uh, applying for a non-conforming use. But in the meantime, in that pending application, yep. as I understand it, it is a non-permissible non-conforming use. And so the building inspector, is he saying that right now he has to remove those vehicles off that street? You could ask Mr. Miller, who yeah, spoke to him today. He didn't say that to me. No, he was pretty specific in giving me the instructions to fill out the form and to apply for, you know, um, conforming use. 
At he said that it he said that it looked you know promising he couldn't make any and that I would have to go and and uh, you know bring other neighbors into the and everyone would ha have to be informed in the neighborhood and have a mm -hmm. chance to be heard and and you know to be kind of um, adjudicated in that sense by the by the planning board thank you Councillor Klein um, I think I have to uh, agree with Councillor Murphy here I think that the, the not the zoning enforcement is not our job here mm -hmm. in the council we have kind of affirmed and confirmed mm -hmm. that so our decision making here needs to be whether or not we're going to entertain it and then um, we have to allow the building commissioner to do his his job and so I think I'd like to call the question. I'll second that. Okay, so the motion on the floor is for a, um, to grant the five licenses for a limited period of 60 days, correct? Anything that I've missed from that motion? No? Uh, would we like a roll call on that? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, Councilor Klein, Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Yes. Councilor Knapp. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Sorry, Councilor Shara. Yes. Okay, so thank you. We'll uh, see you back in 60 days to do see this you. again. See you in about however long it takes <laughs> to get to the <laughs> Thank sure. you. Okay, so moving on to resolutions. We have one resolution. This is the second reading for 18.078 that's a resolution in support of legislation to reduce gun violence in Massachusetts. Move second reading. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, is there any discussion on second reading of this? Yes. I just wanted to provide an update about one piece of this. Um, the legislature's Public Safety and Homeland Security Committee um, reported favorably out of the bill that would allow a family member or law enforcement official to seek out an extreme risk protective order. And it now goes to uh, the House and um, it is looking like it may pass the legislature. So I just wanted to provide that update before we move forward on the vote. Excellent, thank you. Any other comments on this resolution? No? Then um, roll call when you oh, are ready. Okay. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Navarro. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Knapp. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Klein. Yes. Okay. <coughs> so we have no presentations on the agenda, so we will recess for finance. Thank you. Laura, would you call our roll, please? Sure. Councillor Murphy. Here. Councillor Carney. Present. Here. And we do sort of have a presentation, but it isn't in our minutes. Um, the finance director is here to give us our quarterly financial update, and it's it's not particularly on our agenda, but that's why she's here, and there she is. So uh, Susan's going to give us our quarterly financial update, and then we'll get into the rest of our agenda and approve our minutes and so forth. So I believe you all got ahead of time the third quarter financials. And they're organized the same way um, as before, the general fund revenues and expenditures and then the enterprise funds. So in terms of the general fund, um, you know, this is a pretty unexciting report. There's, everything's pretty much on track. Um, we do have some, um, every, everything's coming in the way we thought, although one thing that is good news is that hotel motel tax um, when we look at the first three quarters of this fiscal year compared with the first three quarters of last fiscal year is up 5.39% and the third quarter alone is up 15% from last year. So that's for hotel motel and for meals overall the first three quarters of this year compared with the first three of 2017 it's up 6.81%. Mm. So that is a really good statistic um, and it you know of course is good for our our bottom line as well. So in terms of revenues for the general fund, there's really nothing um, to talk
cause any alarm. Um, everything looks good. Everything's coming in on track. In terms of expenses for the general fund, um, the major expense that we're looking at needing to supplement, and I didn't bring it to you yet because we're not done, um, would be snow and ice. Um, so I am planning on probably a $400,000 transfer from free cash to snow and ice. We usually budget about half a million dollars, and I think we're going to be around 900000 which will be one of the higher years we've had in a while. I think the year before, I'll bring those statistics when, when we do it, but I think the year before we actually spent less than we budgeted for the first time. So it's kind of um, an up and down kind of number, but and normally by this time I would be closing out winter roads, but we can't close them out yet. So, so other than that, all the other expenses and all the departments are tracking fine. I don't see any um, major overtime expenses in any departments, so everything's looking good in the general fund. And in the enterprise funds, similarly, um, revenues are on track. Um, we've collected about more between 75 and 80 percent of our revenues, or 75 percent of the way through the year. And expenditures in the enterprise funds are, are tracking um, the same. So really not, not a lot to talk about, but that's kind of good because it just means everything's going as planned. So. And any questions for the uh, finance director? And we're, you know, three quarters of the way through the year, so yeah. looking good. It is. It is. So. Right. Thank you. Okay. So now I'll come back when you're ready for the orders. <laughs> <laughs> um, so back to our, uh, our agenda. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of our April 5th meeting? Second. Second. Any changes to the minutes at all? Look good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then for our financial orders for tonight, the first one we have um, is going to be 18.083. It's an order to appropriate $15,482 from free cash to the Health Department for Emergency preparedness, preparedness Activities. Whereas the Health Department is a recipient of a grant from um, the Public Health Emergency Preparedness and which provides services to regional groups of communities in Hampshire County and for which the city has received a host community fee of 15000 $482, and whereas the Health Department wishes to carry out an additional emergency preparedness activity specifically to benefit the City of Northampton and its residents, which are not covered by the grant, and whereas the additional activities to be undertaken by the Health Department are in, es um, in essence uh, being funded by the host community fee, uh, therefore order that $15,482 be appropriated from the FY18 general fund undesignated fund balance to the following line items in the health department budget, $5,867 to uh, permanent salaries, $4,550 to contractual services, and $5,065 to training and seminars. We have a motion finance? Second. 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 Um, and Susan will answer our questions tonight in the absence of the mayor. Are there any questions for Susan about these? No questions? Hearing none, then all in <coughs> favor of a positive recommendation of finance, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The next is 18.084, in order to reprogram Northampton Public Schools generator fund of $24,000 to the Leeds parking lot paving phase two. Order that the $24,000 appropriated way back in January of 2013 for the purchase of a generator for the Northampton Public Schools be reprogrammed and added to the $140,000 appropriated in March of 2018 for phase two of the Leeds Elementary School parking lot reconstruction. Phase two includes the main entrance, bus loop, access road, and rear section of the parking lot leading to the cafeteria. Do we have a motion finance? Second. Second. All right. Any questions <coughs> on this one? The, the, as I understand it, the, uh, the superintendent is quite in favor of finishing this paving job and has not used the money for the generator <coughs> in a number of like five years and is happy to have it being used for the paving so it's it's fine with the school department any questions i wanted to ask is the is it just repaving or is there a restructuring element of the um the pattern the traffic pattern the flow i don't believe it's a restructuring pattern we've already funded one portion of this, that which was last year. This is phase two, and actually next year's capital plan will finish off, but we will have done all the, all of the paving around the building, the bus loop, that park, the upper parking area. 
but I don't think we're changing the flow um, okay. of the parking lot There's at all. There's a question about that um, because the parking lot is really awkward and there have been accidents in it, so I was curious if that was part of it or if it's I, just the paving. I, don't I know remember. years from, ago they from looked... Capital Improvements, I don't remember they were changing any patterns. They were just fixing the asphalt and, yeah. Years ago when I was in the school department, we did do a study about changing the flow around the building and every idea we came up with was not... Did, did not improve it, it just <laughs> changed it. So so they ended up deciding to keep yeah, it. All I remember from capital improvements was just to fix the surfaces right. and make them. And do better drainage in some better. places. Thank you. Um, any other questions in finance? Then all in favor of a positive recommendation, please say aye. 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 Opposed? The next is 18.086 is an order to appropriate free cash in the amount of $50,000 to structural repairs at Memorial Hall. Excuse Where me, is, you missed zero wait Did I miss one? Oh, because one of them is on the back. <laughs> and can I make a quick uh, point Sometimes. of information about the ADA improvements, the one before that? Is when the mayor's office submitted that financial order, they made a request that there be that the council entertain Have two meetings. Two meetings and I meant to put that as a process note and okay. neglected. Okay. Um, so this is 18.084 in order to reprogram. Oh, no, that's we did that one. So where is the other? C. 8485. Oh, sidewalk improvements, okay. 18.085, in order to appropriate free cash of $35,000 to ADA sidewalk improvements, whereas the city has received a grant from the Massachusetts Office of Disabilities for accessibility improvements in the amount of $250,000, and whereas the grant will be used to improve accessibility of sidewalks surrounding and serving the downtown municipal complex, which includes City Hall, Pulaski Municipal Building, and whereas the project must be completed by June 30th, 2018, in order to receive the funds and the city desires to have a contingency on hand for any unforeseen costs. Uh, therefore, order that $35,000 be appropriated from the FY18 general fund undesignated fund balance to provide contingency for construction projects with any unspent contingency funds being returned to the city free cash at, at the conclusion of the project. Do we have a motion in finance? Motion. Second. Second. Okay. <coughs> and as I understand, this was just to, um, the project has to be done pretty quickly and if extra money was needed to secure the $250,000 grant. We wanted to have the money on hand because the process to add the money later would be cumbersome and we'd miss the grant. Right, that's kind correct. Kind of really a half and half mm -hmm. um, any, any other questions beyond that for Susan? No, we good? Then all in favor of a positive uh, recommendation in finance, please say aye. Aye. Okay, so that was four, that was five. Now we're on to six, which is in order to appropriate free cash of $50,000 to structural repairs at Memorial Hall, whereas structural um, settling and deterioration of the floor framing on the ground level of Memorial Hall has been discovered, and whereas engineering and repairs are needed, uh, which will include shoring up of the existing floor system, replacement of framing materials, replacement of flooring, and repair of masonry work, all of which are necessary to restore the structural integrity of that floor. Uh, therefore, order that $50,000 be appropriated from the FY18 general fund undesignated fund balance to fund the necessary repairs in Memorial Hall. Do we have a motion? Second. Second. Um, any questions for Susan on this one? This was, I'm assuming, discovered after the capital budget yeah. or it would have appeared there. Yeah, yeah so. Oh, she's recognized, yeah, if you have a question for her. Can you explain the $50,000 of when was this detected? So this is the area outside of the veterans office and HR and retirement, that back ha hallway where oh. the um, giant bell sits. Okay, yeah. um, so that brass bell that sits there um, outside of the veterans office is, is part of the reason the floor is sagging. It's been there so for heavy. <laughs> been there 20 years, um, but it really needs to be it needs to be on concrete um, rather than a you know, right. framed floor um, so they've just discovered the sagging and the, we really can't wait until the next capital plan cycle to make these repairs um, I did talk to Steve Connor today and that bell was given to us by the was on loan from the US government Department of Defense and that bell was on the USS Northampton mm -hmm. um, so anyways he is going to be looking for a place to relocate that bell and it won't 
stay back in that building. No, we won't be able to. We, once we make the repairs, we won't be able to. It needs to, it needs to be basically on a concrete pad. Gotcha. So. Any other questions for Susan on this one? Hearing none, then all, all in favor of a positive recommendation aye. in finance, please say aye. 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 Opposed? And um, I know of no new business. And uh, we've got our financial report already done. So uh, second, all in favor? Aye. Okay. So and now I've just mixed up all my papers. Um, if there's not an objection, would, uh, would it be okay if we moved up the orders that pertain to um, the, the newspaper legal notices since we have people in the audience who yes. are here? Make that? a motion. Is that okay? Yeah. So these are um, G and H under orders, so 18.068 and 18.069. Um, Council, were you making a motion to make I'd like to make a motion to take both as a group. Second? I, I, uh, I think I need to recuse myself from these two. Um, I, in, in the potential, it's not really a conflict, but it's my family is, uh, my cousins are the publishers of the Gazette, and <coughs> so far as I would not benefit financially one way or the other, but I think it's uh, probably in the spirit of, of um, uh, conflict of interest law, I should recuse myself from a vote on this. Okay. Your recusal didn't take enough time for me to um okay give me one second to find these and uh, no thank you though these are all i'm new here guys you're doing great thank you <laughs> okay so 18.068, upon the recommendation of the mayor and the Office of Planning and Sustainability, uh, ordinance to eliminate newspaper legal notice requirement for site plan review projects. An ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts, provided that the code of ordinances of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts be amended, changing the notice requirements for site plan review. Um, be it ordained by the city council of the city of Northampton and the city council assembled as follows. Section one, the requirements, these requirements are superimposed over any other requirements of the zoning ordinance. The building commissioner may not issue any building or zoning permits for any intermediate or major projects until the site plan has been approved by the planning board through a simple majority vote of the members present. The site plan process shall be conducted by the planning board and legal notice posted in a newspaper or general circulation is not required. Otherwise, all procedures for site plan shall be, this is the change, the same as those no, same as those notice filing review and public hearing and recording requirements for a special permit. Notwithstanding these, this, these filing requirements, in the case of alternative energy research and development, R&D, and manufacturing facilities as defined in the Green Communities Act, um, then the next line is struck uh, until review periods are guaranteed not to exceed one year from the date of the initial application. To the end of final board action, said applications shall be reviewed within 45 days and the applicants will be notified of what additional submissions are necessary to meet this one year final action deadline. The planning board shall use the criteria of subsection 350.11.6 for approving or disapproving the site plan. As with special permits, any appeal of a site plan decision by the planning board shall be made in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, Subsection 17. All site plan decisions must be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. In addition, the plans approved as part of the site plan decision shall be recorded with the decision in the form and type of pages as determined by the planning board. The next one is shorter. Um, so this is 18.069, ordinance to eliminate newspaper legal notice requirement for projects that need central business architecture review. Um, an ordinance of the city of Northampton, Massachusetts be ordained by the city council of the city of Northampton. The city council assembled as follows, section one, subsection 156-6, Central Business Architecture Permit Process. B, except for legal notice posted in a newspaper publication, which is not required, 
The committee shall use the same public notice and timeline requirements for permit applications as are required under the State Zoning Act, Mass General Law, Chapter 40A, for special permits and timelines for exercising permits as specified in Chapter 350, Zoning, Subsection 350-4.7. Um, so these were part of um, the, the joint hearing that Legislative Matters and uh, the Planning Board had and although you've recused yourself did can you weigh in at all about um that? yeah actually i mean i have to say the discussion was so uh, brief <laughs> and actually council murphy could probably related as well as i did he was he was present at the same meeting so um but there was not a lot of deep discussion around mm -hmm. this as i recall um planning estimated that it would save about two thousand dollars a year to not to not do these legal notices, and they felt that, from their experience, the they it seemed like they felt that these hearings were not intricate enough, and that their experience was that they weren't attended as a result of the legal notices, and they felt like well, we can save two thousand dollars a year on these hearings by not having to publish them, the publishing really hadn't resulted in many people attending them in the first place. You know, so I guess the question is more, um, they think as a practical matter, the saving $2,000 is worth it given the number of people that have responded to the legal notices. We just have to decide if we prefer the public notice in spite of that for the one or two times that people may want to appear and don't, and don't know about it or don't use the website postings. Um, they're, um, both of them, site plan review is one of the lower levels of things they do. They, they don't say no, they just say put a fence here, put a fence there, but neighbors may be interested in that. And with central business, the same thing. The, um, those reviews are not often well attended. I guess we have to just decide at what point we draw the line and say the public should be noticed on everything one way or the other, or there's some things that we can eliminate based on staff recommendations because these these notices to the tune of two thousand dollars haven't brought a lot of people into these hearings. Um, to Councillor Murphy, maybe you know this, but um, as a practice, and there's nobody else. That, um, in addition to what we've been doing in terms of publishing public notices, there are also uh, direct mailings that go to abutters mm -hmm. for right. site plan yeah. review. Yeah. And direct mailings also, I guess, for central business. Uh, you would know that, Councillor Murphy? Yeah, they, they, they would still do their mailings. Um, it would just be the legal notice. So when they're required to do the mailings, they do the mailings, they just drop the legal notices. And the mailings, I mean, it's abutters, abutters to abutters, and anyone within 300 feet. So their feeling is that draws in everybody within reason that has actually an interest in whatever these things are. Council, uh, to, sorry, just a point have? of information, I have the minutes in front of me and I'm not sure the point has been made that Carolyn had pointed out that um, the city is not required by state statute to put a legal notice in the newspaper for the mm -hmm. site plan review and CBA, although it is required to do so for special permit public hearings and the initial intent when they created the ordinance was to mirror the requirements for the special permit, but I guess now they've decided since it's not technically required by the state statute. That's another reason. I, I'm sorry I, if that point was made and I missed it. Um, so I, that's, what I, that's what I wanted to talk about. Thank you. But also, too, as far as notifying the abutters, the city does not do that. Whoever is applying for special permits they are the ones that pay mm -hmm. to send out notices to all the abutters. But the city sends them, but they bill the applicant for the money to make sure it happens. No, the applicant does it themselves. That I do know. And they pay for it themselves. But the, the list comes from the city, so they get everybody. Councilor Klein? Um, in legislative matters, the things that I found were that were compelling that um, encouraged me to to vote for a positive recommendation were exactly what you brought up councillor carney that abutters find out anyway and it's my recollection and i wonder if you could check the notes 
um, that the amount, I know that we received an email from uh, Wayne Fiden, Director Fiden, about the amount of money that would be saved, and he quoted $2,000. I, I think the amount was quite a bit higher than Carolyn Mish. Estimated $500 a month. Right, so that was compelling to me because it was quite a bit more than the $2,000, so there's a little bit of discrepancy between the amounts of money that we're being told will be saved. Um, so that's kind of a curious point for me. And then I'm interested in uh, the public comment that we heard from Mr. Riefenberg, if I'm pronouncing his name properly, um, that um, there are certain requirements that according to state statute or if, if uh, we were challenged in court, we wouldn't be able to meet if there was internet posting. And so I, uh, you know, I'm still inclined to vote yes on this, but I, I am curious to find out a little bit more information about that and maybe we can do that between today's vote and the next vote. Um, but I think that those are things to look into in terms of ar archiving uh, the notice and things of that nature if they are in fact required um, by state statute. You, did you have an answer to that? Is that I, I, I don't, but I'm also surprised that nobody from planning is here tonight to take these questions from us. And Ms. Mish said could she couldn't be. and say we want you here yeah. next time or something so that we can ask. But anyway, I just want to say that those are um, questions to my mind that I would like answers on before the next meeting. So I'm wondering if we can pose those to the planning board, the planning department, and ask them to, to let us know. I could certainly send an email. Councilor Nash. Yeah, uh, so I, I too have questions um, that stem from my phone call with Dane earlier today um, that, you know, that that these notices cost about $200 a pop, depending on the size, and that uh, it would be, so following that, I sent an email off to Carolyn, and then I got the auto reply that she's out of town, and I was like, oh yeah, she's out of town. So, um, but um, that I, I think it's important before we take this step that we're really clear as to, you know, there still are people who get their information from legal notices. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not one of them, you know, but I do have a neighbor who rides up in his truck and likes to give me things out of, clippings out of the paper and could be a legal notice, it could be all sorts of other things. And uh, that that is the way that, you know, that formerly the public has learned about this. And so we're, we're making a, a change in the formality of how we do all this stuff. And I, I think we need to be uh, clear about you know the possible impact, and that um, that as we change, have 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 we made the the adequate uh, uh, plans so that you know like my neighbor who gets things out of the paper, how else is he going to find out? And that um, and I don't know the answer to that, and that is part of the email I sent to Carolyn. <coughs> so you know for tonight I'm going to vote yes, so that it goes forward for second reading. And then I hope that we have these answers by the next time. Councilor Klein, did you? Yeah, I just wanted to respond a little bit to that, that um, by the same token, there are many people that don't read print newspaper anymore. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and I do think that there's a certain amount of, um, there, uh, I'm really sorry to say this with uh, the publisher of the Gazette in the room, but a little bit of anachronisticness in uh, print news. And in fact, a lot of people that I know are reading the Gazette if they're reading it online. So it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other in terms of you know what might be lost and who might not be able to read notices if they're not in the newspaper at this point. I think the internet is really the, the all-pervading way now that we are um, sharing information and accessing information. Um, so that to me is also a compelling reason for us to, uh, to go with this. Any further discussion? Okay, so these are both of these ordinances that were taken uh, together, 18.068 and 18.069. Um, the floor when you're ready. Well, thank you. Um, Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Yes. Yes.
Okay. So we are going to uh, go back up to the financial orders. So starting with 18.083, order to appropriate $15,482 cash to Health Department for Emergency prepared, Preparedness Activities. Move to approve. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Is any discussion? Nope. Council yes. Council Yes. 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 Uh, $24,000 to Leeds Parking Lot Paving Phase 2. Move to approve. Second. Made and seconded. Is there any discussion on this financial order? Nope. Laura, when you're ready. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Yes. 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 18.085 in order to appropriate free cash of $35,000 to the ADA sidewalk improvements. Move to approve. Second. Seconded. Is there any any discussion on this financial order? Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Shira. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Yes. 18.086 in order to appropriate. I'm sorry, was that the one they requested two readings? Was that, yes. 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 That was. Thank so you. I moved to suspend rules. Second. To attach Laura. All those in favor of suspending rules? Aye. 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 Second. 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 Any second, second reading. Any discussion <laughs> on the second reading? No? Uh, when you're ready. Okay. Um, Councillor Shira. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Okay, that passes in two readings. Now 18.086 in order to appropriate free, free cash of fifty thousand dollars to structural repairs at Memorial Hall. Move to approve. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Oh, when you are ready. Um, Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Okay. Moving on to the financial orders that are on their second reading. First up is 18.070. Um, which is an order to establish water and sewer rates for fiscal year 2019. Move to approve. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. And Councillor Shara. Yes. Okay, next is 18. Point zero seven four in order to reprogram funds to purchase pay to park kiosks. Move to approve. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? No. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. And Councillor Carney. Yes. Next is 18.075, in order to reprogram Forbes tree and fire alarm account funds to replace tractor. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? Nope. Nope. Go ahead. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Carney. Yes. And Councillor Dwight. Yes. Okay, D, 18.076, in order to authorize payment of a prior year bill. Okay, Any discussion? 
Okay, when you're ready. Councilor Lavard. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. And Councilor Dwight. Yes. And Councilor Clark. Yes. The last one in the section is 18.077, an order to rescind remaining borrowing authority for river road retaining wall project. Move to approve. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion on this order? No? Okay. Councilor Murphy? Yes. Councilor Nash? Yes. Councilor Shara? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Dwight? Yes. Councilor Carney? Yes. Councilor Lavard? Okay, so now we are moving on to orders. First order and only order is 18.056, and uh, in order to accept Mass General Law Chapter 23M, the Peace Act upon the recommendation of Mayor David J. Narkowitz ordered that Whereas in September 2011, Northampton became the first community in Massachusetts to adopt a property assessed clean energy ACE program ordinance, which was not implemented due to the lack of a non municipal financing mechanism. And whereas in 2016, the state legislature enacted Mass General Law Chapter 23M, the PACE Act, which established a commercial su sustainable energy program known as the Massachusetts Property Assessed Clean Energy Program, PACE Massachusetts to provide a financing mechanism to provide to private owners of commercial and industrial properties for certain qualifying commercial energy improvements and whereas pursuant to the PACE Act, PACE Massachusetts is administered by the Massachusetts Development Finance Agency in consultation with the Massachusetts Department of Energy Resources and whereas under PACE Massachusetts, the owner of the commercial or industrial property benefiting from the improvements is required to repay the PACE financing through the payment of a betterment assessment placed on such benefited properties by the municipality in which the benefited property is located and whereas, in order for an owner of commercial or industrial property to participate in Pace, Massachusetts, Section 2 of the Pace Act, uh, Section 2 of the Pace Act requires that the municipality in which such property is located must elect to participate in Pace, Massachusetts. Now, therefore, be it ordered as follows, the City of Northampton hereby accepts the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 23M, Subsection 2, and in accordance therewith hereby exercises the option to participate in the commercial sustainable energy program as a participating municipality pursuant to which the city shall assess, collect, remit, and assign betterment assessments in return for commercial energy improvements for a benefited property owner located within such municipality and for costs reasonably incurred in performing such acts. Approved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Councillor Dwight. Um, the Energy and Sustainability Committee actually, um, there was a, actually it was referred back to the committee for discussion because part of the concern was the language that's embedded in this or what's allowed under this, and I'll explain. Um, part of this actually includes an allowance or an accommodation for uh, businesses who want to convert to gas. Now, of course, we've expressed multiple times and in fact actually in in in, in, in law too we've also expressed um, the desire to achieve um, uh, energy sufficiency separate from fossil fuels not being dependent on any fossil fuels to become to have, to have 100 percent green energy is the objective and so part of the concern was that accepting this actually kind of runs somewhat counter to that concern and so what we were trying what we were researching in the sustainability committee was if we could modify if the city had any ability to provide modification or ex ex uh, established conditions um, and no because we don't have the authority to change mass general law basically take it or leave it um, then the debate turned to well this is actually maybe too good to pass up because actually the the net gain is a d lower dependency on fossil fuels. And I'll give you an example. Somebody has, in fact, actually Vernon Street School is a good example. They have an antique oil fire burner that's the size of this building covered with asbestos. 
They very much want to get rid of that. They want to convert to a more efficient system. There is no other, they've researched every other alternative, including thermal and every other resource, and there's certainly not the ability to generate the power they need with solar or anything else. So the most efficient conversion, which would be a substantial gain in reduction of fossil fuel consumption, but at the same time it would be a fossil fuel that would be providing that, natural gas would be a burner that would make much more sense, be much cheaper to run, and much, much more efficient. And therefore, they would qualify under this PACE financing program. So it was, you know, devil's in the details. But so what the... Sustainability Committee came up with was essentially we establish in this resolution, this acceptance action, this order to accept uh, the Mass General Law, we add a, a, a qualifying clause in our whereas's. And again, it's as aspirational though, but uh, and I would like to submit this. You have it, I think it's on your agendas, but this is what I would like to submit as an amendment to this. Add a final whereas, since whereas City Council strongly prefers that renewable energy systems and energy efficiency projects are used before natural gas is considered and recognizes that Pace, Massachusetts moves us toward a reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. So I would offer that as an amendment to this. Second. Second. Any discussion on the amendment of including that whereas clause? No? Okay, all those in favor of the Aye. amendment? Aye. Aye. No objections? No abstentions? Okay. Um, any other discussion on the order as amended? Uh, if I could say, actually, as I said, this does afford us the opportunity to go after the larger consumers of of energy in the community, not just private homes, but these are large commercial um, projects that would that literally move us much farther toward that goal with um, a, a real life benefit for the community in every way, shape, and form. So, so Fabulous. Thank you. That's all that. Any any further discussion? No. Okay. So, Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell, um, Councillor Shera? Yes. Councillor Carney? Yes. Councillor Dwight? Yes. Councillor Klein? Yes. Councillor Labar? Yes. Councillor Murphy? Yes. Okay. So that passes in first reading. Um, moving on to ordinances. We are up to 17.265. 17, you ask? Yes, 17 has been here for over a year. It's the moment that Mr. Miller and I have been waiting for. Um, an ordinance relative to taxis and vehicles for hire. This is the second reading. Uh, it passed in first reading, but returned to legislative matters um, to discuss uh, concerns about the insurance requirements and was amended in legislative matters. Would Chair like to discuss that at all? Would I? Absolutely. Should we put it on the? Do we put it on the? Floor? Yes, I'd like to move it to, uh, for approval. Second, second. Um, as you know, and actually, Mr. Miller gave testimony, but there was also a number of other discussions relative to the issue of setting insurance and liability at um, a level that um, Mr. Miller made a persuasive case is unachievable for or, or unsustainable for a company his size in this community, and it's also very difficult <coughs> to even find someone to provide that coverage. Um, we would be much higher, our requirements would be much higher than New York City with Boston and any other community in the state, certainly within surrounding competing communities that also compete. Um, so it was a recommendation of uh, legislative matters to go back or revert to the original language and the original conditions for insurance. Now, uh, as Laura has pointed out, um, we only did the 100-300 split for liability and personal injury. We did not do, we did not address the issue of, of property. Currently, as I understand, Mr. Miller's already got $50,000 in coverage, even though the, uh, actually he was only required <coughs> to have 25 under the pre-existing terms. Um, I would recommend that we amend here on the floor to put it at 50000 um, That would be my recommendation, and that, that seems 
hopefully that will adjust that. Okay, so that amendment's been made and seconded. Yeah. Any, uh, any discussion on that amendment? All those in favor of that amendment? Aye. 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 That was a good catch, Laura, I think. Yes. Um, I also have a small amendment. I can't believe I'm saying it. Um, <laughs> so. You want to send it back? <laughs> <laughs> um, s under 316-17 business owner's permit um, A, uh, my suggestion is that um, the second sentence, permits may be granted only to suitable persons, corporations, or other entities who are the legally registered owners of said taxi cabs or livery vehicles and provided that the principal place of business for servicing Northampton is established at a legal street address within the city conforming to all applicable city ordinances and state laws. I suggest that we change that from that the principal place of business to provided that all places of business um, for servicing Northampton are established at a legal street address. I'll second for purposes of discussion. Uh, any discussion on that amendment? The, yes. The, the intent of this is essentially to provide, at least from what I understand, is to provide, um, well, would avoid some of the conflicts that we're experiencing right now. Okay. But but we're also any other competing companies that might set up um, shadow cab companies or something like that. Uh, I mean, it makes sense insofar as that it provides more clarity in licensure and ownership, which is probably important given, given the fact that, I mean, it's not a huge industry that's got, you know, Donald Trump-like coverage on assets and stuff right. but at the same time for our purposes particularly for licensure it would make more sense that we know at least every functioning uh, establishment is a viable street address as opposed to a post office box and such yeah yes. so are, are we requiring that the office and the facility where the cabs are maintained are all at the same location I mean, legal yeah, that's not the intent of my amendment, just that any location that the business is operating out of, if there's more than one location, it complies with our okay. our code, essentially. Okay, so any further discussion on that amendment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No objections? No abstentions? Okay. Um, we're so close. We're so <laughs> close. Any further discussion on this ordinance? No. I'll just note also that um, if, if this now passes and uh, is signed by the mayor, then the sort of the 60-day the you know, uh, license that we granted Mr. Miller, um, this will also give him time to come into compliance with this new ordinance. So this, he and the city can work together to make sure that everything is being covered with the new law that perhaps we're about to pass. Um, no further discussion on the taxi ordinance. No. Uh, excuse me, one thing. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry. No we don't, yeah, right? Right. I'm very sorry. That's all right. That's fine. Thank you, though. Um, roll call, please. Councilor Shera. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. All right. First reading. That was great. First reading? That was second reading. That's second reading. That's second reading. It's over. That's second reading. <laughs> Don't do that. I, I miss it already. Okay. Well, the first reading. Okay. Um, okay. So the next, we have um, a set of, uh, the other set of zoning ordinances that were part of the planning board and legislative matters public hearing. Um, Councilor Murphy. Yeah, I was gonna suggest we take 18.063, uh, 6, 6 and 6, 7 as a group unless anybody wanted to call one of them out for any reason. I'd second that. Um, I'll, do I, did I vote on taking them as a group? 
Um, no. I think we can just take these. So Great. So they're moved as a group. Um, is there a motion to put them on the floor? Well, that, that was, that was the motion. <laughs> Sorry, I that. got distracted. Okay. Any discussion on these five ordinances? Um, I can speak to the discussion legislative matters. This is actually this is mostly the cleanup as we most zoning rules that we've just, we've experienced most zoning changes are not significant changes and in some cases uh, address some anomalies um, the public comment was very limited there's just one couple concerned about um, the impact that we have on their property uh, adjacent to Maine's field in the floodplain and point of fact as council Murphy explained we're their lot is improved by the the modification because they are non-conforming currently and this would allow them the the change would allow them to be in conformance and then thereby make it easier if they wanted to sell their property <clears throat> beyond that um, there was um, it allows for particularly for um, making an adjustment to accommodate instead of industrial development and other things to try office parks which would more likely be the tendency for applications and allow to facilitate the opportunity for those to be established. And I defer to any other committee member for further expansion or even more precise expansion <laughs> than mine. The now they're pretty sensible changes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like I would be remiss if I didn't at least read the titles of them. So right. it's. Right. Um, so these are all upon the recommendation of the mayor and the Office of Planning and Sustainability. And it is 18.063 ordinance to rezone parcels on East Hampton Road to Office Industrial or OI. Um, 18.064, which is an ordinance to eliminate business park zoning in its entirety from the code. And 18.065, an ordinance to rezone conservation areas to farms, forests, rivers. And 18.066, ordinance to rezone a portion of property from URB to office industrial. And 18.067, an ordinance to rezone four residential properties on Riverside Drive from general industrial to URB. Does anyone like them read in entirety? Or <laughs> waive reading. There's a motion to waive reading. Is there a second on? Second. All those in favor of waiving the reading? Aye. Aye. Okay. So no further discussion on these five that are taken as a group. Okay, Laura. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labar. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. And Yes. Okay, we did the last two ones already. Um, as far as I know, there are no information requests. Anyone have any new business? Motion to adjourn. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Well done. Thank you, everybody. Well Thank you for going easy on me. 842 bang. <laughs> yes, indeed.